Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a review of chapter 947, Queen's Gamble. And this week we have a nice continuation of the action that had sparked in the prisoner mine with quite a shocking outcome really. After all the hockey hype that was built up last chapter, our expectations were very subverted and not a lot really came from the brief Luffy versus Big Mom stuff. He failed his first attempt and then spent the rest of the chapter running away, which was kind of odd actually, because the whole idea of Queen's plan in this chapter is that Big Mom will come running back around the mine chasing Luffy. But when she came back around, Luffy was kind of nowhere to be seen. I mean, yes, it is sort of implied that he is there because there's a shot of Big Mom smashing a black smudge on a page sort of thing, but I find it really weird that the whole confrontation between Queen and Big Mom happened seemingly without Luffy there. I mean, she was chasing him, right? So after being knocked out, which we will talk about more in a bit, would Queen not have then been able to confront Luffy, who was assumedly right there? And if he isn't right there, then who was Big Mom chasing? It really is very clunkily put together, and as much as I love the reveal of Luffy about to kick into action at the end, I really don't know about how we got there. I just wish we had something, even a small thing, like a one panel reaction shot of Luffy seeing Queen's attack on Big Mom or maybe even a shot of him hiding afterwards. Something that ties this sequence of events together rather than Big Mom is chasing Luffy. Now Luffy is gone and now Luffy is back again. But hey, with that said, I love the huge panel of Queen engaging in his Brachio bomber attack. It's just such an unexpected maneuver for a dinosaur to be performing and it has a nice touch of spectacle as well as a huge wallop of impact on the page. Not only that, but this will probably go a long way towards consoling those who were concerned that Queen got dealt with rather easily by Big Mom. But on the other hand, I feel like this chapter is only going to further infuriate those who already felt like Big Mom is quote unquote underpowered and a joke Yongo. And look, to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the idea of her getting knocked out. Because yes, I get that Queen is a calamity and yes, it was a brilliantly calculated strategy, but Big Mom has always been sold to us as this impenetrable force. I mean, not literally, of course, clearly because of all the children she's pumped out, but you know what I mean, right? Pretty much nothing ever hurts her with the exception of when she's in a brief vulnerable rage, like with the picture of Mother Caramel. And she definitely wasn't in that sort of state here. So actually being able to bring her down doesn't completely sit right with me. And it's not some stupid power scaling issue. Like I'm not going to be spouting stupid shit like, um, oh, Queen isn't even Yonko level. It's just the Big Mom has been portrayed as almost entirely invulnerable in the past in a similar vein to Kaido really. And this does make her seem like she's on a slightly lesser playing field as a result. Of course, this may very well be because she does seem to be significantly weaker in her amnesia ridden form, which was hinted at by Queen in the chapter when Big Mom regained her memories and he said that her aura was completely different. Whilst clearly, you know, shitting himself. So there's that, but I guess it is what it is and we'll just have to see where Oda takes us from here. But of course, we also can't ignore the fact that our fun and friendly Big Mom may indeed be gone now as her memories did begin to return to her after being struck in the head by Queen. Now, I don't want to take this as a solid turn of events just yet because it's entirely possible that this is just a brief flash of memory and that when Big Mom wakes up, she'll still be in her amnesiac state. However, what this does put an end to are the theories that Pudding tampered with her memories whilst unconscious, because if that were the case, then these memories wouldn't even be within her to access in the first place. But in the event that she does make a full recovery, this could lead to some pretty crazy stuff happening on Onigashima, because I don't see Kaido and Big Mom sitting down for a civil discussion, and it may even result in the long awaited Big Mom versus Kaido clash. Or maybe, just maybe, Oda will double down on exactly how screwed we all are by having them form an alliance of sorts, and our own allied forces will have to properly face down two of the four emperors. I do find that to be a much less likely scenario, but if you were going for maximum despair to end a second act, that would certainly be one way of achieving it. In any case, as much as I'm not entirely sure about how we got to this point, I can't deny that I'm very intrigued to see how things progress from here. The whole Big Mom plot has taken a turn that I definitely didn't even come close to predicting, and it might be for the best that she's taken out of the picture for a bit, even if I was really enjoying Olin. Other than that though, this chapter really does only focus on Luffy and Haki. There was confirmation that Luffy had indeed invoked the technique that Rayleigh had used at the human auction house as many of us had picked up on, but there was also a nice little technical explanation as to how it happened. And so the whole invisible armor thing wasn't a new idea, but using Haki to destroy something from within is a pretty big game changer though. I mean, in theory, you could use that to break through most substances, maybe not so much sea stone if you're a devil fruit user, but hey, as long as your will is powerful enough, why not become capable of destroying everything in your path? But that is more or less it, with a great stepping into action shot of Luffy right at the end there. And just on that, I know that Big Mom was a priority, but Queen leaving the prisoner mine with the skeleton crew was 
was one hell of a bad decision. And now it seems like Luffy and the others won't have any trouble escaping whatsoever, which is great because I'm really keen to shift these characters out of this area. Wano is so vast and varied that we really don't need to be confining everyone to this small portion anymore. And I'm particularly keen to see where Kid goes from here. In my head, he has one of two parts. Either he goes on a rampage after what has happened to Killer, and let's face it, probably ends up being beaten once again, or he comes out of this with a somewhat level head and joins the Alliance to seek revenge on Kaido in a much more strategic manner. Look, either way, bring it on. Let's just get out of the prison mine. But that pretty much does it for chapter 947. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.